<laughs> We're continuing the third part of five, we've got five in chapter two. If there's an Olam Abo, in part of chapter three, if there's an Olam Abo, uh, the idea for non-Jews and for those who are meritous, who are unusually meritous, says, even those who are righteous of the nations of the world who are not Jewish, they have a portion of the world to come. The Agos Maimon cites Sanhedrin. The Mishnah tells us that Bilom had no portion of the world to come. This is not according to Rabbi Eliezer, who derives from the Posuk. Yeshuvu Rishoyim Lishoyla. In Tehillim we find that Rishoyim will return to to Gehenna. These are these are the those transgressors of transgressors of Israel who are Israel who go to Gehenna. Kol Goyim Shcheche Elihim. These are the nations of the world that their place. In the world to come is in Sheol. Sheol is another name. Again, has seven names. The Gemara tells us, but rather Elik Rabbi Yeshua. What Ram states is according to Rabbi Yeshua, who derives from the pasuk Kol Goyim Shcheche Elihim. Only those non-Jews who forget that there is a God go to Gehenna. And Rashi explains that this is why Bilam is referred to. And others who are like him. However, those goyim from the from the nations of the world will do uh, do come to the world, uh, do have a portion of the world to come if they're righteous. Rashi cites Sanhedrin that we find in Yeshayahu, the Omdu Zorim Tzorinchem. That in the future world, the strangers, meaning non-Jews, will Take care of our flocks, and those who are strangers from Judaism will take care of our vineyards. That the nations of the world will continue to exist in the world to come. It's the unusualness of Judaism that we believe uh, that not everyone has to be Jewish; they have to do their thing. And so be sure that the world that in in the nations of the world have a portion of the world to come. We're going to go to the next. Kesev mission cites the Ramam codifies the Aloha going to Yeshua in Pirish Mishnah specifically. He says and so, and therefore the Mishnah mentions that Bilam doesn't have a portion of the world to come. This would seem to infer that others who are righteous would have a portion of the world to come. The Uraim explains who are the Hasidim that have a chilek, they have a portion of the world to come. Every goy that keeps the seven mitzvahs. The, the non Jews have to keep seven mitzvahs. And the Rambam says, everyone who accepts upon himself, every non Jew accepts upon himself the seven mitzvahs and he's careful to keep them, he is considered from the righteous of the of the nations of the world and he has a portion of the world to come. The Ram adds, only if he does so because Akash Baruch Hu promised him, pro, uh, commanded him to do so. However, if he does it because he thinks that he's a liberal person and let, live and let live, he won't kill because it's uh, not civilized, then he would not be from Kosiri Umasar. Only he has to know that Hashem is the one who's commanding him. Now, if somebody believes of his own intellect, he's not even considered a Ger Toisha. As Agos Maimonis points out, according to the Rambam, that a Ger Toisha, a, 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 a Ger Toisha is someone who's permitted to dwell in Israel, even though he's non Jewish, because he accepted upon himself not to serve idols and to keep the mitzvahs of B'nai Noach, even though. He has not circumcised and not been uh, immersed in the mikveh. But they accept, we accept him in our midst, and he is considered from the righteous of the world, of the world because he keeps those commandments 
which are referred to as the commandments of the children of Noah, as we find in Hilchus Avodah Zorah, that when the hand of Jews of, the, of Israel rules over Israel, it's forbidden to allow a Jew to to live a non-Jew to live in Eretz Yisrael if he does not accept on himself the seven mitzvahs, seven Noahide commandments. Therefore, he's called a ger, toisha, meaning a stranger who resides rather than who became righteous, uh, Jewish. And he's permitted to live in Eretz Yisrael under those circumstances. The Amaritz Chiyas asks a question. According to the Rambam here, and Hilchus Malachim, that even according to the Chassidi Umus Oilam have a portion of the world to come, that would seem to um, contradict what he says in Isurei Bio, that a Goy who comes to become a convert, we tell him, you should know that Oilam Abo is only for the righteous, and they are Yisrael. And Maritz Chiyas says from that, it would seem that Ramam is saying specifically that a non-Jew does not have a portion of the world to come. So how do we explain that contradiction to what we're learning here? However, we can explain it according to the Sefer Derech Hashem of the Ramchal, that in Oilam Abo, that you will find only the righteous of Yisrael, but the Nefoshes of the Chassidim of Mesut Oilam will be secondary to them just like a garment is secondary to a person. And in this, con at this con conceptual level, they will receive their portion. Thus, the world to come, which is hidden for, for which is set aside for, Jew for Klai Yisrael, is different than that which is set aside for the righteous of the world. For Yisrael, is the actual essence of it, whereas for the righteous of the world to come, and the righteous of this world, in the world to come, they do not have the same status. It's not that they're denigrated. They can't achieve the same level of holiness to come into that area. And with this, we can understand why in Yisuri Bia we write, we tell them that if you come to convert, you will gain that you will have an Olam Abo that you cannot possibly have if you do not convert. But uh, are found in the world to come, and just as we don't comprehend the world to come at all, we, this is a diff these are difficult ideas to comprehend. And therefore, it's very clear why the Ramam chose the saying uh, from the Posik that strangers will be there, will be present to take care of your your sheep meaning that they will be there and they will be benefiting from a better world but they will be secondary to Klai Yisrael. We'll turn the page. In the Sefer of Penine Rabbeinu Akilas Yaakov, of the Stipler Robes itself, he explains this, that Olam Abba of Yisrael is different than that of the righteous of the world because the soul of a Jew comes from under the Kisei HaKovah. As we learned in Seder HaTorah, the, even the Malachim do not see beyond the bottom of the Kisei HaKovah. And therefore, he merits in the world to come to go back to that highest level, to benefit directly from, to live from the countenance of Hashem. Not so someone who's not Jewish, his soul comes, does not come from that higher point, and therefore it cannot be found there. Therefore, and thus, even though they have a portion of the world to come, they can only come back to that highest level that their soul came to them from in the world above. But they will have, for themselves, they will have achieved the ultimate and will enjoy the greatness that they can possibly have in the world to come. The Kiddush Yankiv cites this from the language of the Rambam in Perik Ches Aloha Aleph, the goodness which is hidden for Tzadikim, 
is chayenu mabo. That's his language. That's righteous merit for life in the world to come. Here he says, the Rishoyim, those who have more sins than merits, and so to the righteous of the Umas Oilam have a portion of the world to come. He places them together. Wait a second, one is sinners and one is righteous, because after he writes that we tell a gear that doing mitzvahs like a Jew he merits a certain oilam abo. He continues that we tell a, a, a non Jew, a, 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 a convert, you should know oilam abo we're talking about is we're talking about the one that has to do with the righteous of Yisrael. And that's only available to Tzadikim of Kla Yisrael. And, and those who are righteous of the, of the Gentiles, they only have a portion of Oyama Bo. Interesting, it says, Chelek Oyama Bo, a portion and not a life in Oyama Bo. And furthermore, the stifler adds, there's a posik in Rus, Utehi, Matskutech, Shleimomi, Mashem Alekei Yisrael. That is, it says, may your reward, and we know that Rus was a convert, may your ultimate reward in the world to come be complete and targum says it should be that where it's referring in the world to come that since she came to convert she should be and be part of the world of, of Kla Yisrael her portion will be together with the righteous of Kla Yisrael who are Sora, Rivka, Rocha, Boaz thus promised Rus that her conversion he granted her the right to a reward in the world to come to be with even the matriarchs. And the Targum continues that Rus, Rus answered him, I promise you a portion of the world to come, and uh, even you, have, you will be able to have a portion. In the world to come. Thus, Rus answered him, Not only do I not have the right to a chedik, a chayim, a boy, not even to a portion which is granted to those who are from Chasidi or Musa Oilam. Of course, ultimately, Rus received the portion, as we know, not only of her own, of her, because of her own actions, but also because she was the forebearer of Dovan Amelech. And uh, will Mashiach ben David will come and give tidings to us, not only in Mabo, the world above, but in this world as well. We'll stop here. I think the short ones, the timeline.